Hi guys, this week's vlog, I am going to share an exciting announcement that some of you girls actually already figured out on your own. <laughs> and I also just yesterday shared on Instagram this picture and I want to elaborate a bit on my thoughts on it, why I shared it and why I believe cheat meals are really important to your journey. First, I'm going to tell you about my exciting announcement. If you are a subscriber of Shape Magazine, you already know what this announcement is going to be. I am so excited to finally be able to share that I am on the cover of Shape Magazine's September issue for subscribers. So if you subscribe to Shape, I am on the cover this month. It was an amazing opportunity to work with Shape and with Jeep, and I'm so excited to also be able to share it with you guys. So here are some behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed that quick sneak peek at the shoot for the September issue of Shape Magazine. It was an awesome shoot to be a part of and still, as usual, just pinching myself. Such an amazing opportunity. And as always, I thank all of you guys so much for your support. And now I want to talk a bit about the post that I did yesterday. It was about the idea and the fact that cheat meals, like one cheat meal, <laughs> is not going to ruin your progress and actually can help your progress. And I get a lot of questions on this topic and I did get a lot of questions yesterday, so I'm going to answer some of those questions. For those of you following my Fit Body Guides, you know that I am a big believer in balance and in allowing yourself to live, <laughs> essentially. I don't think that living a healthy lifestyle means being a slave to a healthy lifestyle. I don't think that it's something that should make you hate your life or something that you feel is a chore or something that is not enjoyable and like I'm gonna be real like there's definitely moments where I'm like oh this sucks you know I just want cupcakes and cookies but there also comes a time in your journey where you realize that you're making those decisions to eat healthy to fuel and nourish your body for the long-term satisfaction and cheat meals are more short-term satisfaction so I think that they each kind of have a place in your journey and it's just about utilizing them each to your benefit and to help you get progress and feel and look your best so for those of you that don't know my 80-20 approach, 80-20 means eating healthy 80% of the time and having the purpose of those meals to fuel and nourish your body and for your physical health and to help you reach your fitness goals. And the other 20% is about indulging and enjoying yourself and not, when I say that, sometimes I don't want it to imply that the 80% you don't enjoy yourself because like I said, that 80% is about the long-term satisfaction and how good you feel in the long run. That 20% is very short-term satisfaction, short-term enjoyment, and a lot of times that is kind of what leads you into a downward spiral because you think, you know, you indulge and then you feel good in the moment and then immediately after you're like, oh, what did I just do? I ruined all my progress, I feel like crap, you know. If you're used to eating healthy, when you have a cheat or treat meal or when you eat junk food, you feel feel the difference. And if you're not used to eating healthy, when you have unhealthy meals, you don't feel a difference because that is what your body is used to. That realization is something that I can't tell you. It's something that you have to feel for yourself. However, with that being said, I just believe that a sustainable, healthy lifestyle needs balance. And I don't believe in either extreme, not 100% healthy and not 0% healthy. 
And I think that if you try to eat healthy 100% of the time, that's boring. <laughs> and I think that that's not like a life worth living. Like, let's be honest, you should be able to go out and enjoy cake and eat whatever you want and forget that macros exist, that calories exist. You know, just live your life and just enjoy the moment. So that 20% to me is just as important as the 80%. It just serves a different purpose. That 20% to me is important for your emotional and mental sanity. Like I said, it's impossible to eat healthy 100% of the time. So I don't even want you to try because that is typically what results in binges or in yo-yo dieting, going in the complete opposite direction. And that's not what I want. I want something that is realistic and sustainable for you. I often get asked, do I do 80-20 on a daily basis, on a weekly or on a monthly basis? And I would say on a weekly basis, definitely not on a daily basis. And that's just for me personally that I can't have little cheats or treats throughout the entire week because my sweet tooth will just go crazy and want more and more and more each day. I need to save it for like one cheat meal and I just totally enjoy myself. A lot of you ask, what do I typically have for my cheat meal? It really depends on whatever I'm craving in the moment, whatever Luca and I wanna do for our cheat meal. However, I do recommend limiting your cheat meals to like a 90 minute window, just so that you don't get too out of hand. Remember, it is about balance and moderation and that one meal is supposed to satisfy your cravings from the week and then you can get right back on track and go full force, focus on fueling and nourishing your body for the rest of the week. Do whatever works best for you as long as you genuinely can maintain 80-20 when it averages out throughout the week. So sometimes if you start having little treats too consistently, that 80-20 becomes 70-30, 60-40, etc. So it really is just about understanding what works best for you and not being afraid to kind of you know, give yourself a little bit of tough love if you're cheating too much and if you're not seeing results and if you're even complaining to yourself, like, why am I not seeing results? You need to kind of give yourself a bit of a reality check and be like, mm, it's actually because I haven't really been doing 80-20. It's been slipping a bit and, you know, just do what you need to do to get it back to that 80-20. So there is a point where you just need to start strengthening that willpower muscle. It is a muscle. So the more you use it, the stronger it will get. I notice for myself that like the more I say no, I'm gonna stay on track, the easier it is to stay on track. The times where I say, oh, it's just this one time, the more likely I am to justify just this one time on a regular basis and then it never just ends up being that one time and that adds up. So that is the general idea around 80-20 and just the idea of moderation but also needing to give yourself a reality check sometimes. One bad meal will not make you gain weight just like one good meal will not make you lose weight. It's all about the consistency and if you are consistently eating healthy, you're going to see results. And also as long as you're pushing yourself in your workouts. But if you are consistently eating junk food and eating unhealthily, then you're not gonna see progress. What I wanted to show you in this picture is that actually I had more than a cheat meal at Disneyland in this picture. I had, I would say a good breakfast, a not very healthy lunch, but in moderation. And then the rest of the night I just kind of went and like ate everything in sight that I could get my hands on. And it was a lot of just like sugar, carbs, bad fats, not very much protein. But I woke up the next morning and I looked the exact same as I did the morning before I had any of those meals. So what I wanted to show you guys is that one meal or one day is not going to ruin your progress. However, if you get so down on yourself for that one day or that one bad meal that you allow it to continue, that is what is going to hinder your progress. It's not that one meal, it's usually the guilt. And what I want for you guys is I want you to enjoy that 20% and actually enjoy it. No guilt, so guilt-free indulgences. If you are working hard in your workouts and staying on top of your meals, you deserve that 20%. You should enjoy it. And you know what? This is the other thing is that it actually typically helps your progress because when you are in a time period where you are consistently in a caloric deficit, this can actually increase cortisol levels. And cortisol is the hormone in your body that is, it's the stress hormone. So it, so it's the stress hormone. So if you are under stress, whether it's diet related, sleep related, you know, work related, that stress hormone causes your body to hold on to fat or it prevents you from being able to lose fat even if you are staying on track in the gym and with your meals. So that is why I want for you to be able to 
relax. Obviously life gets hard sometimes and we get stressed, but it's about learning how to cope with that stress and learning how to look at whatever situation is in front of us in life and take care of it and keep marching forward, not getting down on yourself because a lot of times that negative self-talk and that just emotional stress causes more terror on our body than whatever the actual situation is specifically in the context of health and fitness. So that cheat meal is not gonna ruin your progress, but getting down on yourself and allowing that to spiral is what will affect your progress. So both mentally and emotionally, physically, all of it, it's all connected. So now I'm gonna answer some of your questions and one of them in particular was I mentioned in the caption that I drank a lot of water when I got home and why that is. Water helps your digestive system and helps to break down the food, especially when it's really heavy, unhealthy food. I highly recommend drinking a lot of water and I will tell you sometimes, so like, okay, after that, you know, day at Disneyland, my stomach was so bloated and I felt so full and that water made me feel even more full. So I know that it's an uncomfortable feeling, but it will help you digest and it will help just get everything moving and the next morning you'll be much more likely to wake up without the bloat if you drink a lot of water the night beforehand. I also did mention about protein. I got some protein in, I said, before I went to bed. Someone asked why specifically before bed and the only reason for that is because I got home late. So, and I, you know, the, the day was about to end and I wanted to balance out my macros a bit. So I had a protein shake. I did not want like actual food because like I said, I was so, so full. A note on that though, I do not rely on protein shakes for my protein intake. It just so happens that that was the best option for me in that moment since more food probably was gonna make me gag. So I got a quick shake in before I went to bed, a lot of water, and I woke up without any bloat, but I will say I still felt like crap, <laughs> you know, because food is fuel and the quality of the fuel that you put into your body is going to determine how you feel. And so yesterday I was kind of sluggish. Um, I didn't feel very great and even my workout kind of sucked, but that's just a part of it. You know, you have to not let yourself get down on yourself for feeling that way and just understand and acknowledge that that 20%, that cheat meal served a different purpose and that you'll be right back on track. And actually, most of the time, people, when they do feel that difference of uh, feeling so good from eating healthy and then they have a cheat meal and then they feel so crappy, that is actually why they want to get back to eating healthy because they see the difference. So sometimes I actually even feel like if you're so sick of eating healthy, have a cheat meal, see how you feel, and then you'll probably want to go back to eating healthy again. Someone made a comment which was awesome. They said to expand on this, stressing over a cheat meal raises cortisol levels, like I mentioned which will increase belly fat. Therefore, stressing about it is essentially compounding it. Enjoy the cheat meal guilt-free. That is the key, and I 100% agree. <laughs> One question is kind of inquiring a, a bit more in depth about 80-20. Like I said earlier, is it a, a daily, a weekly, or monthly thing? So they said, just out of curiosity, what do you consider the 20%? Would it equate to one full meal, one full day, two meals? I've always wondered exactly what 20% of my week is because it theoretically should be eight out of 24, <laughs> six meals times seven days a week. Got some math in here, <laughs> but that seems like way too much. I typically use my cheat time on the weekends with one or two meals and less strict on the other normal foods. So this is a really good question and I do get asked this, like they wanna know mathematically what is that 20% because that actually seems like a lot more meals through the week if it's exactly 20%. And I wanna say that 80-20 is not a hard calculation, it is more a general approach to balanced eating. I don't want you to sit down and calculate, okay, how many meals am I eating? How many meals can I cheat? That's not what it's about. What it is is understanding that you can have that one cheat meal a week. It's not going to hurt your progress or throw you off track unless you let it. But it's also knowing that if you have another dinner or event or something through the week where you couldn't plan to eat healthy and your only option is to eat something less than healthy, it's okay. It's 80-20 is about allowing for life to happen, not necessarily planning hardcore, trying to control every situation and every meal that you eat because that's impossible. You're never gonna be able to control 100% of the meals 
like I said, I don't even want you to do that, not even with 80-20. I don't want you to sit down and say, okay, this meal, and this meal, and this meal, and that, okay, I'm at my 20%, and now I can't have any room to live. You know, I want 80-20 to be an approach that you understand that have, you know, sure, one to two cheat meals a week. It's the idea of maximizing your health physically, mentally, and emotionally. I want you to get to the point where you want to eat that 80% because it's what helps you feel your best and that you understand that that 20% is also okay because it's not gonna hurt your progress as long as you are prioritizing your health and fueling and nourishing your body the rest of the time. There's a lot of different little aspects that come into it and a lot of people want a hard answer and a hard number of how many cheat meals can I have? That's not what it's about. It's about learning how to live a healthy lifestyle and a balance that works for you. For some, 80-20 is great. For others, they might want 70-30. And for others, they might want 90-10. If they have a hardcore sweet tooth, kind of like I do, and if they have struggled with really a sugar addiction, 80-20 might be too much for them and it might put them back in bad habits. But the idea is to understand that you don't have to be perfect and that your journey is defined by you and the balance that works for you. So I know that that can kind of be hard for some people that do want to be told exactly how many cheat meals they can have and I don't have that answer for you. The answer is whatever works best for you, whatever maximizes your health physically, mentally, and emotionally and is taking care of both sides of 80-20 even though it doesn't have to be exactly 80-20 and learning just what works best for you. Another topic that I do want to talk about, this is going to be my last little note on the bloating and cheat meal topic is so someone asked if I'm gluten free and I did get tested and I do not have celiac disease and I am not sensitive to gluten. So for me, I don't need to eat gluten free products. I can if I want, but they're no different for my body to something that has gluten in it. The reason why that person asked is because typically people who do have gluten sensitivities or celiac disease will have a much higher likelihood of bloating. So if you are bloating from eating certain foods, then that could be a sign that you have a food intolerance or sensitivity. And that is where I would highly recommend for you to get an allergy test done, a sensitivity test. I did like a panel where they drew blood and that is how I found out if I'm gluten sensitive or intolerant or not. It's really important to note because it is true that if you are suffering from bloating on a daily or regular basis or stomach cramps, then that is a sign that you have an intolerance or sensitivity and that is something that you should speak to a doctor about. Okay guys, so those are all the questions I plan on answering in this video, but if you do have any more questions, just comment them below. And as usual, there will be an FBG giveaway with this vlog. So if you wanna let me know what you liked or loved, I always love hearing your feedback. Thanks guys so much, and I will talk to you guys next time. Mwah. When you lose fat, you lose fat from your overall body, including from your breasts. And first, um, what are macros? Also uh, referred to as flexible dieting.